What's going on, everyone? And welcome back to the channel. After the debate, it looks like the Democrats are starting to panic. They're obviously starting to realize what we've been saying all along, how Biden is not fit to be president. After all that lying to the public and themselves at that matter. They are cheap fakes video. Uh, they are done in bad faith. Uh, and, uh, and some of your news organization uh, have, uh, have been very clear, have stressed that these right wing, uh, the right wing critics of the president have a credibility problem. What I can say is that, just to take a step back, it was a bad night. We understand that it was a bad night. Um, and the president has spoken to this. Did you ever notice when she lies, her eyelids flicker like fishing spinners? But anyway, as I was saying, all the Dems are starting to panic, except for Joe Biden. Check it out. It's a bad episode. Uh, no indication of any serious condition. I was exhausted. I didn't listen to my instincts in terms of preparing. And I had a bad night. Do you really believe you're not behind right now? I think it's a, all the pollsters I talk to tell me it's a toss-up. It's a toss-up. And when I'm behind, there's only one poll I'm really far behind. CBS poll and NBC, I mean, excuse me. And uh, New, York, New York Times and NBC, both have, have yeah, you about six right. points behind in the popular vote. That's exactly right. Yeah, that's exactly right there, Mr. President. But after that interview, the polls changed a bit. Check it out. So, Harry, do we have new poll numbers for President Biden post-debate? We, we do. You know, CBS News, YouGov conducted some polling post-debate. We can compare it to the pre-debate numbers. And the bottom line, Alice, it's not any good. It's not any good. Look at this. Voters who say that Biden has the mental health to be president. It was just 35 percent pre-debate. Look where it's dropped to now post-debate. 27 percent. How about that he should be running for president? It was 37 percent pre-debate. It's now 28%. I have never seen numbers this bad for an incumbent president during my lifetime. I mean, that mental health to be president, just 27%. You might say, okay, you know, that's low, but a lot of people thought Biden was too old back in 2020. These numbers look nothing like this back in 2020. These numbers were bad already. And the truth is, Allison, they have gotten just considerably worse, even in just a few days after that first presidential mm. debate. Did you ever watch the debate afterwards? I don't think I did, no. He doesn't think he did, no. The fact of the matter is, he doesn't think, period. Just one simple question. Now, I'm a dumbass, but if you're the president of the United States and you're going to defend yourself about a debate you just had, don't you think you should have watched it? You won the popular vote uh, in 2020, but it was still deadly close in the Electoral By seven College. Million you're votes. Yes, but you're behind now in the popular vote. I don't, I don't buy that. I don't think anybody's more qualified to be president or win this race than me. Well, that's what you think, sir. But what do some of your top donors and endorsers think? You know, the ones that help fund your campaign. A group of business executives penned a letter to Biden urging him to pass the torch, writing, quote, we believe that nothing short of American democracy is at stake this November, and we are at risk of a devastating loss, the letter reads. Filmmaker Rob Reiner did not mince words, posting, quote, it's time to stop effing around. If the convicted felon wins, we lose our democracy. Joe Biden has effectively served the U.S. with honor, decency, and dignity. It's time for Joe Biden to step down. Literary legend Stephen King posted, quote, Joe Biden has been a fine president, but it's time for him, in the interests of the America he so clearly loves, to announce he will not run for re-election. And so while a lot of people have talked about this based on vibes, based on the debate performance, the data really doesn't lie. And as much as we can talk about how old Joe is and how hard that was to watch, the reality is he's not looking like the candidate that can win in November. And the fact that Democrats are dealing with that data and slowly saying it's time for you to step down, Joe, but Joe won't look at that data. I don't know. Personally, I kind of enjoyed watching that debate. It was extremely entertaining to me. But anyway, let's get back to the Dems freaking out. What if they were to actually replace Joe Biden with someone else, with another candidate? What did the polls project how that would work out for them? If it's not President Biden, then who could it be on the Democratic side? And the truth is, there are no easy answers. You know, I went back and looked at the polling versus Donald Trump for a bunch of different Democrats have been suggested. Gretchen Whitberg, Gavin Newsom, Kamala Harris. Look at this. 
They all trail Donald Trump. So the idea here that we're somehow going to get this magic bullet, that there's somehow going to be some Democrat who can beat Donald Trump easily, I just don't see it in the numbers. At this particular point, if Joe Biden takes on Donald Trump, he's trailing. If there's another Democrat who runs against Donald Trump, they too are trailing. Perhaps you want to make the argument you bring in another Democrat who isn't as well known as Joe Biden, who univer has universal name recognition, and maybe they could change the numbers. But the fact is, any Democrat who entered the race right now, at least among those that are being suggested by a bunch of folks, they would all enter the race at this particular point as an underdog to former President Donald Trump. It just goes to show you the people want Trump. At least the majority of the people do anyway. And rightfully so. Before they threw COVID at him, the U.S. economy was booming. It was weird how when Biden came into office, all the mandates began to be lifted. It was almost like it was set up to be like that. What do I know? I'm just speculating. The numbers look uh, horrible for Joe Biden. Uh, as far as we can tell, he just doesn't believe them. That's what we hear from, uh, from political reporters who speak to members of his inner circle. Um, his view is that... Everybody's been wrong about him time and time again, that he's been counted out before, and uh, he always, you know, proves everybody wrong, um, you know, and he can point to uh, the 2022 midterms. One has expected that uh, Republicans were going to have a red wave and Democrats had a better than uh, expected result. Um, he, you know, he can point to his win in 2020. However, I was, you know, I was seeing um, a, a CNN clip with their pollster going into it, um, it, tackling the notion that the polls have underestimated Joe Biden in the past. If you actually look at the 2020 general election polling, the polls, if anything, overstated Biden's uh, chances. You have to remember that in 2020, Donald Trump was the incumbent. Trump was down against Biden basically the entire time. Sometimes he was behind Joe Biden as much as eight points. In the end, he ended up uh, losing to Biden by about four points. Um, it, in many of the polls throughout the race actually had Biden beating Trump by even more. So the fact that right now Trump is massively up against Biden, if we're, if we're talking about the polls, whether they're getting things right, there, there's a, it is perfectly plausible, in fact, it might be the more plausible thing to expect that the polls are overestimating Joe Biden's chances right now. The only reason why they're overestimating Joe Biden is because the polls are created by the same machine that pushes Joe Biden. The same machine that convicted Trump on those 34 felonies. Once again, just speculating over here. It's Senator Mark Warner is, is assembling a group of senators together to try and convince you to stand down because they don't think you can win. Well... Mark is a good man. We've never had that. He also tried to get the nomination, too. Mark's not. Mark and I have a different perspective. I respect him. And if Chuck Schumer and Hakeem Jeffries and Nancy Pelosi come down and say, we're worried that if you stay in the race, we're going to lose the House and the Senate, how will you respond? I, I go into detail with them. I've spoken to all of them in detail. And what do they have to say about that, Mr. President? But this president has been a great president. And I can tell you firsthand, as a person who orchestrated many of the pieces of legislation that the president takes great pride in, and he should, because he was there at the table, chapter and verse, very conversant, with a vision, a purpose, with the knowledge of the issues, with values underlining it all, and again, always asking the question, what does this mean to working families in our country? Uh, so at any thought that uh, he, he wasn't able to deliver on all of those is, I can just say, just didn't happen. So, Madam Speaker, you just went through the president's record. But let me ask you about the current moment. Does he have your support to be the head of the Democratic ticket? As long as the president had the president, it's up to the president to decide if he is going to run. Uh, we're all encouraging him uh, to to make that decision uh, because time is running short. Uh, the uh, I think overwhelming support of the of the caucus. It's not for me to say I'm not the head of the caucus anymore, but uh, he's beloved. He is respected, and people want him to make that decision, he has, not me. He has said he has made the decision. He has said firmly this week he is going to run. Do you want him to run? I want him to do whatever he decides to do. That sounds very reassuring there, Pelosi. Just curious, are you required to have that fifth of vodka before every interview? 
I've never seen a president 36% approval get reelected. Well, I don't believe that's my approval. Right? That's not what our polls show. And if you stay in and Trump is elected and everything you're warning about comes to pass, how will you feel in January? I feel as long as I gave it my all and I did the goodest job as I know I can do. That's what this is about. Well, just as long as you did the goodest job you could do. Anyway, I know this looks very much like we got it in the bag, and we pretty much do. But don't take things for granted. Get out there and vote. Get out there and vote Trump. Because at the rate we're going, between the open borders, the prices of food and gas, the economy, who knows if this country could last another four more years. So what do you think? Are the Dems panicking? Is our economy in shambles? Leave a comment down below. Well, that's going to do it for today, folks. If you liked the video, please give us a like. Consider subscribing. Stay tuned for more political and automotive content. Thanks again for watching. We'll see you next time on A Patriot's Touch. Have a nice day.